have some guidelines on how much work or rules of thumb on how much work should you do before mm. you do outreach, right? Because you, you do want to make mm -hmm. the other person feel important. You do want to make sure you do the research, but also you want to be mindful in the way you use your time. So are there any, I know this is a, it could be many different questions, uh, answers to yeah. this question, but on mm -hmm. from your perspective, what are some of the rules that you use to, to determine what the right time is? So um, yeah, this is a great question. And it's actually one that, if you think about it the way that we do, it would mean that it requires you to do more research than most, and thus you will have more success than most. And what I mean by that is one of the key things that we think is a requirement is having listened to some or all of episodes of the podcast you are pitching. It is funny to even say that as like, it's a thing that should be required. But it it is true that most don't do that. It's because they're they have a list of a hundred shows, and you know the shows are in the marketing category, and most of them the people have never heard of outside of just doing research to build this list of shows, and they don't feel like spending the time to actually go one by one through each show and getting to understand the nuances of each one, including hitting play on episodes and actually listening to the podcast. And if someone were to do that, which we think is the right amount of research, um, they would give themselves a superior advantage than anybody else because they would be able to say things in the outreach that only somebody who actually knows intimate details about that show would be able to say. It's so easy to fake personalization. You can fake personalization by saying, hey, insert name, loved your insert last episode title. Like that's, that's, that is so common that it's, it's literally white noise at this point, but being able to reference something that was at minute 38 of the episode that was five episodes ago, and then tie it to one that was two episodes ago and tie that to your life as the person pitching, that is harder to do. And it shows the host that you actually know, oh, okay, this is an actually, this is an insider. This is somebody who cares and, um, and it'll set you apart. And the reason why most people don't do this is because they think it doesn't scale. And that is true. If, uh, you were thinking about cold outreach in the way that it's thought of mostly in sales outbound, which is, let's say your total addressable market is. 5,000, 10,000, 20,000, 30,000 companies. If you were to do this level of research on each company um, with qualitative data to this degree, it would actually prevent you from being able to reach out to enough of them to actually get the momentum that you want. And because the total addressable market is so large, it would actually kind of hurt your strategy. So I understand where that concept is coming from. But the problem is if you apply that concept to podcasts, where in most cases we see at the most, there's going to be like 200 good podcasts for you to reach out to. Every single one is important. And so if you apply the um, qu high quantity strategy to a low quantity total addressable market and you apply no quality to it, it you're going to run out of shows very quickly and you will have ruined your chances with most of them because you did not apply quality and you run out fast. Whereas if you've got 50,000 possible prospects you can reach out to that, that's going to last you a long time. But if you've got 200 shows, you're going to run out quickly, especially if you're pitching the same templated cold email you know, pitch to everybody and not applying any personalization to it.